Hey, this is Tom Matthews, and you're watching the Slash Track Network. Stay tuned. When Master Evil comes to play And Mama says that it's okay Alex and Josh are stole away And made to watch these movies To stay alive until the day they Good evening, Slashaholics, and welcome welcome to episode number six of Getting Sidetracked with Josh and Alex. And today we have uh, the esteemed pleasure of being joined by one of my childhood heroes, one of my childhood icons. I probably rented this man's movies more than anyone in North Bend, Coos Bay, Oregon combined. Uh, The star of 1986, Jason Lives, Mr. Tommy Jarvis. He's also in Return of the Living Dead as Freddy. He came back. As Return of the Living Dead Part 2 is Joey. He's in the upcoming fan film Never Hike Alone 2. He's in the new horror film that should be released uh, according to IMBD, Go Away, with a bunch of horror heavy hitters. We are joined tonight by Mr. Tom Matthews. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Man, Tom, so good that you are here. That's uh, what an intro. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I practiced it a time or two the last day. Let me ask you a question. How old were you when you first saw Return of the Living Dead? Oh. Um, okay, so <laughs> 88, I was five. My, five years. That's bad parenting. <laughs> oh, my dad. Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2. Return of the Living Dead 2. Uh, I actually saw Evil Return dead. of the Living Dead 2 before I saw the classic Return of the Living Dead. And uh, Mr. Joe Bob Briggs uh, was when he had Linnea on to like Fright Fest on TNT. Yep. I got to see the actual, uh, the first film that you did. And I was just blown away because people ask me, what's your favorite horror movie? And my answer is always Return of the Living Dead. But it's not just my favorite horror movie. It's probably a top 10 film of mine all time. Just all genres. It's really, uh, it's 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 holding up, man. It's 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 standing the test of time. The the soundtrack's so good. The movie just works for. Mm-hmm. You know, it's lightning in a bottle. I I tell people it just uh, really good movie. I hear that you they're got... actually in talks oh, of remaking the original Return of the Living Dead. Have you heard anything about that? I heard something about it, but I know, don't like that idea. <laughs> yeah, the not good. So great. You know, one of the things that we did, uh, we rehearsed for two weeks before we started principal photography. So that kind of gelled everybody, I guess. And then uh, James, Karen, and I, we found out on part two that we were born on the same day. So maybe that's why we gelled so well together. Simpatico. Exactly. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna ask you, Tom. So how do you think that Joey got the job that one that one day gig? Uh, with uh, James Karen in the in the sequel, did he just did Joey just answer a, a Craigslist ad or a newspaper ad for a grave for a grave robber, or how did he stumble upon that? <laughs> I think, uh, uh, yeah, that sounds good. I have no idea. <laughs> didn't, didn't really give it much thought. I can't yeah. believe your girlfriend didn't pack you a lunch. I mean, she knew yeah. she could go dancing, but maybe she was the one behind it. <laughs> yeah, she set the whole thing up. She needed money for drinks that night. You know, so, I got I got to make an admission. I saw Return of the Living Dead a little bit sooner. Me and Alex are only a year apart, or a little bit later than he did. My first, uh, I think, one of my first times that I saw you in a film was my brother was really into martial arts films, and uh, I saw your performance in Kickboxer, and <laughs> uh, Kickboxer Four, if I remember right. And yeah. then my sister got me on Return of the Living Dead One and Two, and I was hooked on those uh, before. Jason Lives came into the equation, but I saw you uh, in a movie with Cody from Step by Step. That was my first uh, ah. introduction uh, to the great Tom. Awesome. Yeah. Albert Pune, the director. You've done like 12 or 13 Pune movies, haven't you? I have, yeah. 
Yeah, you have a huge uh, uh, history with yeah. him. Are you guys are you guys buddies in real life? Is that the situation? We were, well, not really. No, he's uh, uh, he passed away recently. Okay, I'm sorry um, to hear. That. Yeah, um, but he was very creative, very soft spoken. It. I don't know where he came up with these fantastic stories because you know he wrote most of most of his stuff mm -hmm. and uh, just out there and wild and he's very soft spoken. You know, he's probably. He's a Hawaiian. He's born in Hawaii, from Hawaii. Yeah, I was going to say there. Very sweet guy. Very unassuming. Your character in Kickboxer Four. Um, so he was Hawaiian. So was it his choice to put you in the Hawaiian shirt during the big fight scene when the girl is going to take on basically the whole island, the whole island of karate masters? Did 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 Pune put you in that Hawaiian shirt? I mean, well, the setting was kind of like, like that. Yeah, tropical. You know, it was very okay. tropical. You you seriously always had the best outfits in every movie you've ever been. Where is the fu jacket from Return of the Living Dead? You, you know, I wish I had it even more so. I wish because uh, we had there was two there was two versions of that jacket. Okay, the fu one that everyone knows, and the director thought possibly it might go to TV, so he made a jacket that said TV version on the back of it. <laughs> what? Um, that's, that's the that's, one that's the one i wish i had <laughs> that's what they did with ghostbusters uh josh you're you're the master of this ghostbusters one or two didn't they film two different versions where they could say ghostbusters yes. and not yeah in the first one because they had filmation uh filmation yeah. going to battle with them over the name ghostbusters but yeah so okay. that's that's i really like yeah. that they had were prepared for the tv version that's great uh, two so two jackets were they both screen used tom they were Oh my God, Tom! I was gonna yeah, say we threw, that's we threw on the TV version one at the you know at the last take just in case. I wish I, wish I had a varsity jacket like that in high school, man. Yeah. Because the ones we had were the, the the cheapo. Go down to the mall, beg your mom to get you the Letterman's jacket that you got for like the bowling team or something. <laughs> uh, I needed the the fuck you <laughs> jacket. I love the jacket and Jason lives as well. Just the whole outfit. It's like a superhero suit at this point. That was pretty much my, you know, if you look, some, someone pointed out to me that I have suspenders in Return of Living Dead and in Jason Lives, which we shot them a year apart. So that kind of makes sense. But I kind of picked up, picked that. I was wearing that stuff. So I, I brought it to the wardrobe and we ended up going with that, that uh, Levi jacket with a, the fur on it. Was the fake you one. Lamb wool. I, I just, I've always wondered, was Tommy Jarvis the villain of Jason Lives? Was he the villain? No. Yeah, you brought, you brought the, you brought Frankenstein back. Correct. <laughs> but only because of my demons. Yeah. Were you pretty familiar with the uh, backstory? Did you uh, watch four and five? Uh, prior? I went after I got, after I got the part, I went and I uh, looked at one through five. Okay. Yeah, specifically so to see if uh, uh, Corey or John Shepard had had any mannerisms I could bring over to my portrayal of Tommy Jarvis. Didn't really find anything. Well, you you stood up. I've always felt like uh, your performance was the best Tommy Jarvis. Obviously, it's the most iconic. Um, you know, I really enjoyed that. Um, in the movie, I was going to ask you, um, when you watched part five, you saw that Tommy pretty much had a premonition, you know, like a dream at the beginning of part yeah. five of what you actually ended up doing. And uh, like as, as a fan, as not the actor that played him, uh, do you kind of see that as a self-fulfilling prophecy on the part of Tommy Jarvis? Yeah, I saw part five, five and was terrified, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, it didn't have, I mean... It didn't have any lighting. It had, I, did, I don't know. I just wasn't, wasn't my cup of tea. And it scared me. And I called it Tom McLaughlin, our director. And he kind of assured me he was doing other things and had lighting. And, well, you know, I mean, he created uh, uh, characters and uh, relationships. And I think that's why people respond to it as being one of their favorites. Because yeah. you had so, someone to hope for. Yes, definitely. The, it's, got, it's got the most, uh, it's the most lighthearted and, and fun of all of them, but it's also got... The director's the really, uh, he's really a, you know, old school horror fan too. So, I mean, there's a lot of Easter eggs in there. 
Love it. Yeah, he, I was going to say the lightning, the lightning ball is, uh, you know, from Frankenstein. It just goes on and on from there. Karloff Supermarket. When I'm on oh the, yeah. In the back your there. your chemistry with Jennifer uh, Jennifer on the set of that film. Like, did you guys have chemistry off offset? Is that why you guys? Because on screen it like just jumps off the film. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, she's in my opinion, Tom. She's the foxiest, probably final girl in the Friday the Thirteenth series, and she's probably my favorite too because she kind of takes no shit, and yeah. she's kind of like, yeah, she's kind of like almost she like uh, takes charge, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And she and saw you like that, that, don't you? Oh, I love yeah, definitely. And she and <laughs> she saw Tom. Listen, she saw Tommy uh, come into the jail. Her oh. dad, her dad was pissed off. So that Man, immediately he's cute, Dad. Don't yeah. know too much. It's kind of cute. <laughs> I was so Tom. I was going to ask you a question, man. Um, so your hair in the '80s, man. Uh, in specifically Return of the Living Dead two and yeah. Jason, your hair is like the most perfectly quaffed, oh. like like <laughs> beautiful mane I've ever seen on a man. Dude. How many sponsorships and hair care products approached you after Zero. seeing? Oh, get out of here! Come on. Swear to God. <laughs> you so you started out though in commercials, dude. You did Tostitos. I did, did a bunch of commercials. Yeah, I, I yeah. You did like Tigra for, you, you for about a... three for about three years. I got every tenth one I went out on. Oh hell yeah, dude! Yeah, Guaranteed a Sprite pay. commercial, uh, La Tigre commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a commercial with uh, Nicholas Sheridan for a, a beverage in Norway or something. Such a big first time I met her. Um. We became we went on to hang out a lot with had mutual friends and stuff like that. Okay. Uh what other a Pizza Hut commercial? Uh bunch of them. Now Tom, when you do those commercials, um, did you ever get some product? Did they ever like send you some swag over? My first wife on uh Tostitos commercial. Really? Oh, you got a wife, you got a wife out of it. That's I got it. a wife out of the Tostitos commercial, yeah. That's phenomenal, man. They're like, here's a cut. They're like, in case you're having a party tonight, Tom, here's about six or seven <laughs> bags. Here's some dip. Kevin Sorbo worked on that tip Tostitos commercial. Really? Hercules. Hercules. What uh, was your earliest Hercules. desire to be an actor? Uh, you know, I was kind of out of high school and fl kind of floundering and, and uh, went through all the courses in high school. What do you want to be when you grow up and blah, blah, blah. But nothing really stuck out. I know, I knew I didn't want to be uh, do an office job because I, I need to be outside and stuff. So uh, a girlfriend I was dating at the time just turned to me and she goes, why don't you become an actor? It was like, so I started studying and three years later, I started booking stuff. Did you ever dream? I, I, actually, I actually went to work over at Lorimar Productions in the office building to get my SAG card, ho praying that I would get cast on something. And then a year and a half later, casting director uh, in the office, Doris Saba, cast me on Falcon Crest. So I did a walk on and I was rubbing oil on someone's back, had one line, and that enabled me to get my sad card. Uh, you did a bunch of soap operas, didn't you? You were, you were, in, now you were in Dallas. Weren't you on a Dallas? Uh... No, I was in Dynasty. I did Dynasty. Two episodes, two episodes yeah. of Dynasty. Uh, what else? Paper Dolls. Paper Dolls. Paper dolls. Yeah, Nicola Sheridan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was on that. You were on um an episode of a T so you like did a guest star spot on Mr. President, like when Fox kind of first came out. Direct. George and, C. Scott. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna George C. Scott Patton, yeah. Academy Award winner. Had a scene with him. That's incredible. You yeah, been... my scene. I had a scene. Uh, the, the premise was I was uh, a, a secret service and I was assigned to his daughter. And she and I were getting romantic. He and should he have known. That. So I had a scene with him. And uh, uh, we did his coverage first. The camera was on him first. And uh, it's five o'clock and he left. So I had to do my, my take. The camera's on me with somebody else. Oh, my God. Oh my <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't tell me. He felt a little bad, but not that bad. Yeah. It would have been fine if I would have known. But no one just, you know, it just feels like, what the fuck? He's like. I gotta get out of here. Get, uh, I got something. Yeah. Here's my Oscar. Just but it was, it was a, a true honor to work being a scene with him for sure. And then Telly Savalas, uh, 
in uh, 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 Dirty Dozen Part 3 or 4 or something. We shot that over in Europe. With the Van Patten brothers and Randall Tex Cobb and yeah. a bunch of people. R Randall Tex Cobb probably was... Yeah, now I don't know. Hey, Josh, Randall Tex Cobb was in Ace Ventura. He's the one who is like Jason Jim Jim Carrey. Randall yeah. Tex Cobb. And this is the sports guy. Raising, coming out. He was also in Raising Arizona, the guy in the yeah. motorcycle. Toughest, toughest son of a bitch ever. He fought Ken Norton, and Ken Norton destroyed him for fourteen rounds and didn't lose the fight. Like, uh, did you ever have some trouble with Randall on set, Tom? Or no, he wasn't jealous that you were stealing babes on set or anything no. with that hair you had going. Or that hair, the, the quaff right. and the suspenders didn't. Uh... Tom showed up in that jacket and those suspenders and that hair going with the Tostitos and babes were just there you blocking. Go. <laughs> I got, I got kind of a two parter. I got to put my interviewer hat on for a second. Uh, I was just curious. Um, first, the first part is what your favorite role is that you've ever done and why and. If you my could... favorite role I never got, and that was in Platoon. Okay. What, okay. Which part? I, I met Charlie Sheen's part. I met uh, Oliver Stone. I just had finished Return of the Living Dead, and uh, I had a meeting with Oliver Stone over at Lionsgate, and he was, he was editing El Salvador. And if you haven't seen that movie, you should. So we got to talking, and, you know, he walked me out to – he wanted to see what kind of car I was driving, so I guess it didn't impress him enough. <laughs> so he cast Charlie. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but that that one got away. That one kind of hurt a little bit because I really wanted 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 that part at the time. I think you're a little bit psychic because the second part of my question, and I'm not kidding here, was if you could have cast yourself in any role in any movie, yeah, TV show, what would it be? Um, but yeah. yeah. As far as what you were, were cast in, what, what would you say your favorite role has been? My favorite role, probably uh, my favorite, well, I mean, you know, Return of the Living Dead will always be near and dear to my heart. My first big part in the movie and the arc of the character, innocent kid, brain sucking zombie, <laughs> is a lot of fun to play for an actor. So it's a great arc. But a fun part that I, I, I liked doing was... Uh, Demolis in uh, an Albert Pugh movie called Down Twisted. That was a lot of fun. Only because it was scripted as a 240-pound, uh, dark, tall guy. So I was I was going to the gym. I was working out. I, you know, I got cast. I knew three months before I was going in. So I was working out all the time, eating a ton of food. And then I dyed my hair black, as it said in the script. But it didn't look good on my, my coloring. Because I'm all up skin and stuff. So I bleach it all white. I didn't tell him. Oh, no. I, I go down to the set in Mexico and uh, I got a, a blue, I found a blue suede jacket. I put a silver, I mean, Demolis, what kind of images does that conjure up for you? So I got, I got a silver cap in my tooth, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just went down there as Demolis and I'm standing there and I said, Albert, goes, I said, Demolis. He goes, I love it. <laughs> so that was the fun thing about Albert. He was, you know, he liked you to bring stuff to the game, and uh, uh, it was very creative and very fun. Every, every, every from the very beginning, he won. The first movie I did with him was uh, Dangerously Close, and so he's got a bunch. It was a got male heavy uh, guys in high school. We were too old to be in high school, but we were in high school. We're not early twenties. Don Michael Paul, uh, John John Stockwell, blah blah blah. So uh, he had everybody there, and he kept everybody there, reading scenes back and forth. Now this is the first time he hired me, and uh, we were there for like four hours, just reading a scene with each other and back and forth, reading other scenes. And I, when I got there, I said, Albert, why did you why did you have us? read all these scenes together, although we were in them and kept, kept us there for that, that long. He goes, I wanted to see it, make sure I didn't, wasn't getting any prima donnas on the set because that makes the budget go skyrocket. So okay, that was his test to see if we can hang and, you know, still be he, uh, positive. He was like, all right, Tom, you made it through that. Now let's go check out your car and uh, outside. Well, that's Albert Pune. Yeah, no, he's, I know, I, no, he's I didn't have stuff. a car then. Maybe I did. <laughs> Tom was so after Jason lives and the yeah. success of that 
Fox film. Were you approached by uh, anyone? Like, did John Carl Beekler or anybody approach you to do? No, uh, Paramount did call my agents though, and got, they wanted twelve headshots. So, but it never, never went anywhere from there. Which I was surprised. That's is the resurgence of the character lately. Is it? Uh, how has that been for you? Like with the video game and the fan film? Yeah, the video game's been great. I, you know, it's creating a. You know, I don't think anyone should see it until they're like 12 or 13 years old. So the video games created all this uh, Friday fan, uh, lower demographic. So when they grow up, they'll be able to see the franchise and stuff. Yeah. So that's great. And it was a lot, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun to be in it. And the, uh, just, the fan films, are you enjoying revisiting the character? Yeah, very much so. I got involved uh, in a weird way. It's a long story, uh, but... Uh, yeah, it kind of uh, re revitalized my career, so to speak, because the um, the executive producer was a friend of a friend and a big Friday the 13th fan. Uh, and then he went on to make his own movie, so I did a movie for him as well. And then my name just got out there and I did a Western uh, uh did a western a couple of years ago which was a lot of fun in detroit and a bunch of other stuff you know go away final summer um the never hike alone do you get a good say i'm sorry alex this is my last part of the question oh go ahead go ahead i was gonna say do you get uh some say on the character of tommy jarvis uh like do you get to talk about that before or do you, they just say this is what's happening with his character in these fan films? No, I pretty much know him and I have a pretty clear vision of who he is and he's still tortured, will always be tortured, even if Jason was gets blown, blown up with, you know, dynamite up down his throat or something. He'll always be tortured and have dreams about it. Very much alone. I I, I, I always thought he and he and Megan actually eventually got married, had a couple of kids, but just he just couldn't get over that, so they ended up getting divorced, and uh, he became very much a loner, hanging out at Camp Crystal Lake because he he knows Jason's going to rear his ugly head again at some point. He feels a responsibility. Uh, so so the Never Hike Alone ambulance guy kind of made sense to me because he has a pulse on the community and stuff like that, finding out who's dying and you know. Hey, Megan Head, remember me, asshole? Hang on, kid. Alex? I was well. I was just gonna say. Uh, so for, okay. So the ending, up... the ending of Never Hike Alone Two would have been much different if I didn't say something. About okay. I was gonna. So was CJ ever approached to to play Jason? Other no, than... and I I I thought it would be a good idea, but Vincent Desante, the director, he he grew up. Jason uh, Jason Lives was his favorite um friday film and he grew up at a, at a lake of course so when he was younger he always was scared jason was going to come out of the woods so this has been a big dream of his to do the fan film um they had already shot half of it by the time i got involved and uh when i was asked i was like i'm not so way i'm doing a fan film mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean that's like come on it's like I think of a fan film and you and I going out with our phones and you know that you know, come because it's I've seen them, but they sent me the first half of what they had shot and Andrew's great in it. I mean, the kid who who who's the hiker and yeah, was very very topical. He's a blogger. He's filming himself. He's you know it all made sense. Comes across a a path that's not on the map. Gets curious, follows it to these cabins, and all hell breaks loose. So. The production value is why I got involved in it because it was amazing. The story was great, and Andrew was great, great in it. Yeah, you guys also had um, some of the people who did the special effects from the Bloomhouse Halloween movies working on these films too. For, uh, yeah, Vincent. From my understanding, yeah, yeah, that's all Vincent, Vincent Desante. Well, yeah, those, yeah. those kills are phenomenal. I, yeah. I, I got oh, what do you see? Never like alone too. It's going to blow your mind. No, we can't. Uh, I just. I just watched Never Hike Alone, uh, like the kind of sneak peek. I just uh, rewatched Never Hike Alone. 
And then so there was, was that a trailer for Never Like Alone 2? I, I think it was it was six minutes long. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the I kid did watch fishing. It. You're fishing. And you know, there's a kid, the your kid's son. Fishing? Yeah, your son. Oh, my looks, son. It was oh, Tommy okay. Jarvis. It looks like Corey Feldman when he's in From part four. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking got to it. myself. Okay. And that's why you wake up and you're like, Yes. Gotcha. Right. What did I tell you about coming out here alone? I just wanted to go fishing. Okay, but it's not safe for you to be out here by yourself. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Just, uh, you know, let me know next time. Okay? Okay. I promise. Okay, good. Is it because of Jason? Where did you hear that name? The kids at school. They said he drowned in the lake and that he's still down there, waiting. Waiting for what? To pull me down with him. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I was like, that kid looks exactly That's like a, yes. Corey Feldman. <laughs> that blew my yeah. mind. That was well, we better we hope hey, hopefully Corey, because we want Corey to do the show someday. Hopefully he doesn't catch wind uh, wind of this interview and want some uh, money from the production for using his likeness. What do you think, Tom? I don't think so. <laughs> He's okay. But you never know. No, you never know. Um, Tom, I was going to say, uh, so Adam Marcus, I'm so surprised that he did not, cause he originally wrote Jason goes to hell with Tommy in mind. Uh, and then new line, new line didn't own the character of Tommy Jarvis. That's why uh, it's not called Friday the 13th. Yeah, so yeah. they had to switch it out and take the guy who starred in the Friday the 13th series. And they basically took Tommy Jarvis and replaced him. Um, I'm so I am so surprised that since it was written with Tommy as the lead star of that film, that it wasn't you and Megan as I and they never approached yeah. you about that. I'm surprised we didn't, you know, follow up on part seven. Yeah. Just, there's no there's no uh consistency in the franchise, except for Jason and, and you know, the three the three or four Tommy Jarvises. Because I, I am in the beginning of part four, uh, part seven, a little bit, but they use old clips for part six. So, Tom, you also, so you own a construction company? Is that, yeah. do you, okay, so it's called, uh, it's called Hammer and Trowel? Yes. You're also reality TV kind of star. You worked on the Osborne's house. Yes, I did. <laughs> did you know that, Josh? I did not. That's new. That's I new did their new house. Movie. Yeah, when they were on MTV the first season. That's incredible. Yeah. Are you in some of the shots, Tom? Um, uh, where you're like, talking to them? No, my work or... is. I mean, okay. you don't want to know how they shot the show? Sure. They put cameras all over the house. Okay. And how they made an ep And I was still there because they extended a contract. So I was there for three months while they were filming, my crew and I. And uh, so how they made an episode, 22-minute um, episode, 30-minute episode with commercials, um, they would take from the six months of filming they would take uh dialogue from whatever they were talking about say it was the the guy next door the dog they would take dialogue from wherever to make a, a cohesive show okay so they so just the first the first sentence could have been here the second sentence could have been here the third one could have been here and it, it, until they made a cohesive show That's they must have had a ton of editors and they must have had all the the sentences that they said laid out somewhere to make a show together. 
Yeah. So if you go back and look at the first season, because we were still there working, they have a close up of of Sharon. They cut back to Ozzy, back to Sharon, but the wall, the wall will be a different color because we were there working. Oh, oh my god. god. You know, yeah, it was, a, it was a really great job. Sharon was very, very, uh, she's very creative. And and uh, we cast uh, their daughter, Kelly's fists in bronze and made them the front door hinges. Oh, okay, wow. that's pretty cool. Yeah. It just were went they, on. Tom, were they familiar with your, with your past, with your work? No, they had hired a project manager who I was, he was familiar with my company because they had another contractor who wasn't performing, overcharging, whatever. So they hired a, a project manager and that's all he does. He oversees, make sure the contractors have the insurance and are capable of doing it. So uh, the original contract was for uh, uh, four months. And then because they were getting a bad taste in the mouth about the house, so they wanted to sell it. Okay. So we're just going to be uh, flip it. So we were going to put it all back together. It's a two-story house uh, over by a nice, nice neighborhood in, in Beverly Hills. Um, oh, yeah. So three and a half months into it, Sharon decides, no, she wants to move into the house. So we tore everything out again. The plumbing fixtures were in. We we're getting ready to paint. You know, the windows came out, everything just everything everything changed so I was, I was there another eight months and then mtv started five months after that um uh, within that eight month period but what no, i had no, on, a, on a normal job so you get the plans and stuff on a normal job you'll get like maybe f things will change a little bit five change orders to change something or 10 a lot we had 259 change orders oh my god and the guy, they had a project manager, so the paperwork was just like, because you had to keep track of everything, have backup and all that stuff. So that was that. Was that. The house came out really nice. Ozzy had his own man cave, which was fucking bitching. Walnut bookcases with a big screen. He had a, he had a powder room at the house, and uh, uh, he wanted a urinal instead of a toilet. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Good for him, man. It was oh, small, yeah. So we put in a urinal. Yeah. So I got the idea. I've got a urinal here at my house in my bathroom too, because oh. of Ozzy. Okay. Yeah. Urinals, urinals and bidets, man. Yeah. I know it's like and then Sharon brought over. Oh, she here's a cool thing. She brought over uh from England uh these crystal chandeliers, but they're shaped like boats, ships. Okay. So she goes, Tom, because she's got an English accent. Tom, <laughs> where should we put these? I said, Oh man, Sharon. So let me think about it. Give me a day. So upstairs on the second floor, they had this really long hallway going down the bedrooms, bedrooms on either side, game, the gym, the bedrooms, whatever. I said, Jack, come here. I said, look at this. The Nina, the Pita, and the Santa Maria just coming down the hallway. <laughs> Christopher Columbus, baby. That's great. So she loved it. She also brought over some, uh, some uh, leaded glass from England and it was, Moses coming down the mountain with the tablets wow. and they were two panels and they were arch shaped at the top because what should we do with these? I said, I'll make doors out of them. I'll put glass on both sides because they have to be tempered because they're too low to the ground. And, you know, we have codes here in California and uh, made a walnut frame and we made doors out of them going into the game. Room. So that was, it was the, the whole job was like that. It was just Phenomenal. Just listening to to these stories uh, from the Osbournes, and I was like an audience member all of a sudden. Yeah, I, I, I that was probably thirty years ago already. We did that one, my partner and I. I probably right now I'm probably employing. I got two huge jobs going on, uh, so maybe forty people. Wow, that's incredible. Um, so, with your name recognition, does that help the company at all? Do they say, yeah. hey, we want Tom to come and No, I don't talk about my clients and it's always like word of mouth and a lot of famous people. You know a lot of them. Okay. Um, I don't talk about it. Some of them I have, uh, you know, uh, confidentiality stuff that I, the guys see. Sometimes some of the jobs, some of the guys have to sign them too to go into the houses and stuff. But, I got I got an idea of someone you probably did their house for you and you don't have to say yes or no because you've done... Some some stuff with him, Tom. 
I'm thinking maybe you did George Clooney, one of his houses, because you have a connection with George. Oh. I do. He hired me for, we've done a couple of films together. Mm -hmm. Peacemaker. Uh, Peacemaker, yeah. You've been Filsy. on, yeah, you've been on <laughs> ER with George. Uh, yes, that was, that was the first, actually we did a thing called Waiting for Woody. Okay. It's a short film that his now uh, producing partner, Grant Heslov, directed that George was in it, and I had a very small part in it as a bicycle messenger. Hey, so man. we got that. George also did, uh, uh, he, he made a short back in the day. What the hell was the name of it? Kelly Preston was in it, God bless her. Uh, Clue, Clue was in it. Clue Gulliger was in it. Oh, wow. I was Love the barkeeper. I was the barkeeper who gave his son alcohol. And he came in and uh, to confront me and thank me, thank me uh, for losing his son because his son died from alcohol in a, in a, uh, a car crash. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time I had met Clue, actually. Clue, Clue was... Uh old time western actor back in the day he was. uh yeah. he was leonardo like leonardo uh, uh the western uh was based on him clues actually in um what was the leonardo dicaprio's movie that he did once upon a time in hollywood oh yes, yes that one okay gotcha. so clues in that movie i you know what i i did know that clue was in that movie because i love that movie but i was upset because quentin I, only got him quentin only got him from the side he didn't give him a frontal. Oops. He didn't give him a close up. Shit, gotta give, gotta give so him the Clue, star. Clue was, Clue was basically that guy. I mean, he was, he was that. You know, he started in a lot of westerns. Great actor. Clue. So, do you think, um, like in another universe, do you think maybe Clue, from the, from the, you know, like coming and confronting you about his son when the drunk driving accident? Do you think, well, I'll give this kid another chance and we'll hire him at my medical supply warehouse down the road to see if we can turn him around? I don't think he even knew I was even hired, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Frank hired me. <laughs> uh, I was going to say um, that just going it back. Was funny, you know, Clue is funny in that he, he uh, you know, my name is Freddie. So if you go back and look at it, he calls me Fred. <laughs> okay fred <laughs> <laughs> which i thought was genius <laughs> that's okay. how a boss that is he wouldn't call you freddie he's trying to address you as a as an adult because you're working for him yes i was hey can i ask you a question so tom <laughs> what the hell was the trioxin doing at the medical supply warehouse was that shipped there by accident typical army fuck up <laughs> there it is <laughs> i think <laughs> you know I, i've got a question you want to see him see him the corpse, <laughs> they're in the basement. Oh, look at it. It's right over there. Um, That's, that scene, the office scene kind of encapsulates the whole movie for me. I thought, you know, when we were when, when we were filming it, I thought, man, that guy's chewing up the scenery. I thought he was like way over the top. But he is, I mean, it's spot on what he did, James Cameron. Yeah, great together, like, like seriously. And I've, I've got to know, this is actually a viewer question that somebody asked me to ask, a subscriber question. Uh, how were you approached to return to the franchise and return the Living Dead Part 2? Oh, uh, well, they had the script for, they had the script for Part 2. So they, they back in the day, uh, used to take it to uh, foreign distributors to get money to make the movie. Okay. And you give them the right to, to distribute the film all over the country. So you go to each country and you ask them. When they, when they went to Japan, it was a huge hit in Japan. So they said, absolutely, we want to have to, we want to distribute the sequel after you guys make it. Here's a bunch of money. But could you have James Cameron and Tom Matthews come back in some way? Because they're like incredibly popular over here. So that's why we came back. Oh my and God. I was happy. And I was happy. It didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But I was happy to have the job, number one. And more important to, to uh, you know, work again with James Karen. For, for sure. I think that Return of the Living Dead 2 gets a lot of... Uh, I like the movie. I actually... You I actually, know what? If you're, uh, uh, you know, a kid from 8 to 12, and that's the first time you're seeing it, that is your world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great ride. Does it hold up to part one? Absolutely not. Part no. one is a dark comedy. Yeah. 
We're not making fun of ourselves. We're like in it. We're you and you laugh at what the hell is going on because it's so outlandish. But you That's, care too about the characters. You guys did make us care about yes. the characters, you know, yes. for sure. And yeah, I think so. And then part two, you know, they went for the jokes that Michael Jackson at the end and <laughs> kind of wink, wink, nod, nod kind of stuff. Bring more brains. <laughs> Even I was Return Return of the Living Dead too though I think gets a lot of crap because the original 1985 classic was so good. Yeah, the bar was raised so high. It's like yes, I agree. It's like it's like okay, Marcus and Jeffrey Jordan, like yeah. you're playing D one basketball now. Go live up to Michael. Your yeah, dad's well, I, you know I do I do a lot of horror conventions and people like part two because. It, it's very nostalgic for them because that's the first one they saw. Yes, yes. same here. I, yeah. We rented it at least a hundred times, Tom. <laughs> I was that, that t- so Return of the Living Dead two, and I don't know if a lot of people know this. That had one of them. Like when people ask me, like people on the channel or Josh or anybody, they say, "What's the scariest scene you've ever seen in a horror movie?" And it's from Return of the Living Dead Part Two. Wow, which scene? It's the scene where you're asking your girlfriend. If you can basically eat her brains, and oh, she's yeah. like, she says, yeah. "Okay, yeah," she's like, "Okay," like, and I okay, just, Joey. <laughs> honey, it's only me. <laughs> okay, okay. I put myself in her shoes and it's yeah. just terrifying to me. I yeah, just, it's, it, it's really unsettling. Suzanne that, Snyder. Yeah. You, I actually got her that job. I know you did. I was just going to say that you guys actually, so did, okay. So you well, got we knew her. each other and I, you know, I was already cast of course, but uh, she told me she was going to go in and read as my girlfriend. I said, what are the scenes? And she told me the scenes and said, well, I'll read them with you. Let's let's practice. Let's you know, we we'll rehearse. So we rehearsed, and and then of course she got a call back to read with me with some other girls, and you know, nailed it. <laughs> I've got the casting director. The casting director. That was so good. Did you guys hurt rehearse that? We well, no. It was just oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Alex. And then she was also she was also in Killer Clowns, which I. Uh, also uh, auditioned for for the Grant Kramer part back in the day. That movie's a cult classic too, man. She's yeah. weird. It's got a video game coming out as well, David Bergantino. Yeah, that's, that should be good. Um, I was going to say, just just uh, on the Return of Living Dead too, before we uh, finish with that, I've got an irrational fear to our man, thanks to those movies. Maybe I did watch it a little too young. Uh, and yeah. Alex, Alex <laughs> likes to pick on me and send me little uh, tar man memes. <laughs> but no, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the scariest part for me. Tar Man, for some reason, is just rage. 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 My 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 favorite scene in Return of the Living Dead <clears throat> was uh, when they when the, the girl they chop in half coming through the window and they put her down on the gurney. Mm-hmm. Her half spine is like going back and forth and it's oozing out blood. But it was, I was fascinated by having a conversation with that person, that corpse, that yeah. disgusting looking woman. Must Miguel, Miguel Nunez Jr. He's like, what, you, they say, yeah. what do you say? We kill something. It's like, you can't kill it. Uh, you know, spider, it's already dead. And he's like, yeah. what do you fucking mean? Like, why, do you eat, why, why do you eat people? Not people. Brains. Jesus. It stops the pain of dying. You can hear me. Yes. Why do you eat people? Not people. Brains. Brains only. Yes. Eating brains. Why? How does that make you feel? It makes the pain. Go away. So that was fascinating to me. And that's, you know, from the mind of Dan O'Bannon, who wrote and directed it. That, that was creepy because they're not, yeah. they don't want to actually hurt you. They just want to yeah. get 
whatever causes them to stop being yeah. and dying. And then now brain. nowadays, you know, zombies eat brains because of because of that movie. It became part of pop culture now, which made it bigger than itself. You know, yeah, there's songs and everything about it. Songs and uh, skits on TV and they're all going for the brains. The Simpsons, where they're the the Simpsons are going after Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo has a cartoon. Oh, they have a cartoon of me, actually. Are you okay. for real? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to have to look that yeah, up sure. and <laughs> pull it up for a clip. That's great. Um, Tom, so Never Hike Alone 2 is coming out on Friday the 13th in October. In October, yeah. A great yeah. release date. I'm going to be in. Uh, at Halloween Palooza at a horror convention, and I'm bringing it there to premiere it there as well. Uh, we we uh, when we did Never Like Alone, we premiered it at Telluride, and if you ever get a chance to go to Telluride for the horror f- film festival, jump on it because it's a beautiful setting, and they have banners up over everyone. You see the new new filmmakers, you see a bunch of actors there. But Vincent is taking it there because that's where we kicked off Never Hike Alone five years ago. After and now it's got forty million, uh, four million views on YouTube, probably mm-hmm. more. Now. We got to speak with Vincent uh, around the time that uh, the first one was coming out, and I can tell he's got a lot of love for the genre and also the practical effects. Yes, time period. And I was yeah. going to ask you if it's refreshing to see. Uh, you know, younger filmmakers go in the practical route because I'm sure you saw a lot of amazing practical effects on the set. You know, Return of the Living Dead, Jason Lives, and things like that. I did, and it, it is fun to see it. Uh, and Vincent, you know, he's he loves he, he's a huge fan of the franchise, and he knows everything about it inside and out. And he's like an encyclopedia. And his enthusiasm alone uh, will want to get you involved. And he, you know, a lot of the the crew they were, you know huge fans and they they want to give their time towards the project and stuff so kudos to them and it's going to be great it's going to be great looking forward to close some people's mind rick cologne rick the dick uh <laughs> who i locked in the jail oh he's yeah also never hike alone never never uh never hike in the snow uh he's back first time he's going to see jason <laughs> in his 45 years of law enforcement the first time because he's always thought you know, Tommy Jarvis was killing everybody, but he couldn't prove it. So he was frustrated. Uh, but and he's got a big plan to, you know, or at least he thinks he does a big plan to take Jason out. I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. Like I, when, yeah. when I saw him never hike in the snow, I was like, oh, thank goodness. I just thought he's been locked in that cell for 40 years. Yeah, <laughs> no, I brought him. I brought him. I got him involved in that, too. Oh, sweet. So he, he goes, yeah, let's bring him in. So. Rick That's Cologne's cool. big plan to take out Jason is he just Vinny's got a, a, Vinny's a, yeah Vinny's a friend of mine he lives not not too far from here and Sheriff Garris I see him walking around my freaking neighborhood every like once a week he walks my neighborhood he walks <laughs> right in front of my house do you oh, get lives in that area or else that's kind of strange no it's good he lives like three blocks away it's good to hear that he's still walking after his back was broken in half yeah that's, <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> That's the most upsetting part in Jason. That's Lee. my that's my favorite kill in the whole franchise. They really. Because I saw I saw it in dailies with no music, no special effects, and it was pure. And I got to tell you, not anything. Yeah, it, it not only did it look brutal, but the fact that in that moment, as a father myself, I get it. Uh, his daughter is about to be taken out. You know, and he knows yes. at that moment he's done, but he's got yeah. to save her. So not only is it like a brutal death, but it's it's one uh, like the kill itself. But just what the he's co- doing there is powerful. It's powerful. Yeah, his mo- his, mo- his motivation to to do it.
very powerful scene. Tom yeah. McLaughlin, uh, Vincent actually reminds me of a younger Tom McLaughlin because I've spoken with Tom too. And they just the love for the horror franchise. Yeah. Uh, went all the way back to the Universal Monsters. So if there's anybody to uh, pick up these characters, I think Vincent, you know, has done a great job and I really trust him with them. And uh, everything I've seen is just amazing. And it was it was so awesome to get to see you back in that role because if there is any hero character survivor, well, I was you know I was I was waiting for Tom McLaughlin to write a script and he did, uh, but it's girl heavy and it's on the other side of the camp. So, uh, uh, so you know, you know, you know, I asked him about the kids in because uh, that that was the high stakes in Jason Lives. There were actual kids at the camp for the first time. Yeah, the two the two guys at the lake. I mean, under the in the in the cot. What were you going to do? Those guys were brothers. And uh, what were you going to be when you grow up? What yes. were you going to be when you grew up? Those you two know, guys. And Jason. I just, I just met him for the first time at a screen we had for uh, Jason Lives over here in, in Las Feliz in California. Oh, wow. Uh, they were there. That's I didn't see a lot of the people. So uh, the, 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 the yuppie couple uh, in the park, I didn't I never met the guy. I knew Cindy because she's married to uh, Rick the Dick, you know, Vinny Gasufero. They they got married. They were dating, and now they're they've been married and they have several a lot of kids. So I knew her. I never met him, and I never met the twins. And now they're all grown. I mean, the two brothers now they're all grown up. So that was it, a lot. Of fun. That is the the yuppie couple. When I listened to Tom talk about that, scene. that was an added scene. It was an added scene. Don't be home without it. <laughs> Because <laughs> they needed more kills or something. New, right. uh, they were like Paramount's, like, hey, we need a few more kills here. Yeah, and I never. Tom, Tom intentionally had thirteen kills. Okay, yeah, yeah I remember him mentioning that. Yeah, yeah. And intentionally, he but they wanted five more. And Tom had an interesting take on why he put the kids in there, not just for high stakes, but also he said if you watch it, it's almost like Jason is making sure that they're being taken care of properly. Like he doesn't go try to kill him. He kind of uses him for a uh, trap at the end of the movie. But he has a chance. He could have slaughtered every kid in that in that uh, yeah. cabin. Uh, he, he came to me. Tom said, Hi, Jason's in the camp. He's got get Megan by the head. How do I get him? I said, I'll just call him. I'll just call him from the boat. Hey, Megan, head, come on. It's me you are, remember? Come on, you pussy. And then he gets his attention, and then he makes a beeline for me. So that was improvised. Uh, okay, that that yeah. made you the hero, man. You say not only did you save the girl, but you saved yeah, like, saved my girl. children. So yes, <laughs> that's incredible. But CJ was great. CJ was never saw him. Never, I mean, you know, talked to him. Uh, wasn't hanging out. Uh, interesting thing. A kid. We were in between shots, and uh, I think there's even a campfire because it was at night. Night shoot. We're sitting around and and. Uh, this kid comes walking up on the part, you know, it's a, it's a campsite. And he's like, he's like looking around. I said, can I help you? And he goes, is Jason around? I said, uh, I think he's maybe in the trailer. Is there something I can help you with? I think he's busy. He might be prepping for something. He goes, yeah, can you, um, can you ask him if I leave my window open? Would he come and kill me tonight? <laughs> it's, it's, that sure. I'll, I'll pass that on. <laughs> and y'all shot that scene the final scene in the pool correct like tom's pool we something? shot the uh no we shot above water he, he jumps on the boat that was at the lake okay in uh covington and then we rented a big pool okay in the city of industry uh for the underwater scene and then he tom got his dad's pool when megan Took the propeller and, and jammed it in, in Jason's face. That was at Tom's father's pool because they father. they murky they made the water really dirty. And you worked with John Travolta's uh, nephew or cousin? Yeah, Tom Tom Frilly. I just saw him. I just saw him. Uh, there's a, like a reunion over at uh, uh, the gas station, uh, the Call Classic Convention in uh, where were we in Baton Rouge. So yeah, There's we were all together. Darcy was there. CJ was there. Tom McLaughlin was supposed to be there, except for he had COVID. He's over it now. Okay. Uh, Tom Frilly was there. If I didn't say that. Um, yeah. So 
it's fun, you know. It's uh, do these conventions. I do about ten to twelve a year, all over. Been overseas many times, and uh, it's just great to see everybody. You know, it's either Return of Living Dead or Friday the Thirteenth. Where are you going to be soon? And we can. Uh, I'm going to be at uh, on o- October Friday the Thirteenth. I'll be at Halloween Palooza. Uh, Ottawa, Ottawa, and Iowa. Whoever that is, Otama? October twenty seventh at the uh, Oct- Atomic uh, Monster Weekend, and that's in uh, Mesa, Arizona. And then November tenth, Texas Zombie Convention in San Antonio, Texas. That's the whole weekends. All those are weekends. Heck yeah, Did, Josh. You got anything else for Tom, man? I, it's been this has been uh, my favorite interview we've done. Yeah. <laughs> I've got I've got tons more, but you know, I just I'm just so glad that we got to to speak with you. This has been this has been an honor. Like we were really uh, looking forward to getting to speak with you. And yeah, great. Just everyone check in for uh, you know Never Hike Alone Two. It's going to be on YouTube, paid for by the fans, made for fans for the fans. I, I I'm not sure if they still have the Indigo Go Go campaign going on, but for ten bucks you can get your name in the credits and you'll be solidified from here until eternity uh, as a, a thank you. Um, I think there's like three pages or four pages right now of people who who did that perk, but uh, there's posters and the film and blah, 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 all, all this other stuff, sign posters and stuff like that. But I'm looking uh, for everyone to see us and and uh, getting back on screen with uh, 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 Vinny Guastafaro, Rick the Dick, as I call him. I'm thinking about getting a T-shirt made, Rick the Dick, and oh start sporting that. <laughs> but, yeah, it's going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. Um, they're They're editing it feverishly right now. Vincent DeSante and, and the team to get it out by the due date. So it should be fun. Do you know the runtime or is that under, is that kind of secret? It's going to be, I think it's going to be about nine, 80 or 90 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fun. Well, he was going to, he was gonna, originally going to make four separate ones, uh, but he combined them all, I guess. And then, uh, um, so it's just yeah, 80, 80, 90 minutes, I think. That's a also, hot right there. It overlaps in part one. You know, in part one where I take off in the ambulance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go back a little bit. I have a fight scene with Jason, but you only hear it. The paramedics hear it. And then the kid runs out and he gets killed. And you don't see that. But so we we start some of it. It overlaps. So you actually see my fight scene with Jason. Okay. It pulls me into the thing. So it's and so it overlaps. I take off and then Jason starts walking towards the wherever I'm going, following me to the hospital because I'm taking the kid to the hospital to get fixed. I, I want a time machine right now because I'm I like yeah. a feature. And if you haven't seen Never Hike in the Snow, check that out because there's an important character in there as well. A couple important characters that uh, spill over into Never Hike Alone 2. Can't wait. That's Josh, great. you should you should put the links for those Definitely. in the description down below. Yeah, yeah. They're going to be down there. Uh, the Indiegogo is going to be down there if it's still active. And uh, this is going to be exciting. Feature yeah, it, for the year. That's great. It's going to be cool. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Tom, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, and, guys. Yeah. Alex, uh, my pleasure. Yes. Thank you. And, Good to uh, see you guys. Take care. Thanks yeah, for having me. Everybody, be excellent to each other. And remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. Have a great night. Don't be afraid. I'm busting in the damn head. What up, Josh? What up, Alex Slash Track? What's going on? I'm busting in the damn head. So you guys shut up.